My name is Arun Serafin. I have a PhD in electronic materials from MIT. I was an OSA MRS fellow in 1999-2000. I was already in town in 1999 working at a think tank and uh, knew a lot of people who worked on the Hill, including um, previous congressional fellows. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in political science, so I always had an interest in policy, and those folks I talked to told me that you really have to see how life on the Hill is and how policymakers uh, try, to, try to address science and technical issues. There's a really um, well-established placement process to figure out where you're going to work. Uh, I looked at a lot of offices and ended up choosing to work for Senator Joseph Lieberman. Strong advocate for a lot of science issues, um, especially military-oriented issues, and, and I, was, I have a defense background and wanted to continue working on that. Um, he was a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, which made it particularly attractive. Uh, it turned out to be a really good decision because during the course of my fellowship, he was asked to be the vice presidential nominee for uh, Vice President Gore at the time, and so I got to experience a lot of the 2000 campaign. So during my fellowship year, that was by far the highlight. There was a buildup to the selection of the vice presidential um, nominee. It turned out that year, um, Vice President Gore was looking at a lot of senators. Um, it turns out that for some reason some set of them were on the seventh floor of the Hart Building. Uh, and every time his people would show up on the seventh floor, this this rumor wave would would go around the whole floor saying he's, he's coming to talk to our boss or he's going to talk to someone else's boss. Um, when Senator Lieberman was picked, it was just like a huge explosion in the office and we were overwhelmed with requests for information and um, put in this place where we got to work for a, st a standing senator, a senior senator, help out on a campaign where we could uh, on the side, and then in the event that he won, shut down his office and record his whole legacy. And so um, that was a fantastic experience the whole summer and then through the election, helping out as much as I could. Um, and then I had a, a really unique perspective on the Florida recount because had it gone slightly differently, I would have been in a very different place in that next January. And so every four votes found in whatever county was really important to me um, and just kind of a curiosity to most people. And so that was a really fascinating experience. When I was in Senator Lieberman's office, I worked on uh, funding of science agencies, which was a big issue even back then. We tried to double the funding for science agencies back in 1999. Uh, I tried to strengthen the quality of science being done in the Department of Defense, um, especially through increasing uh, basic research investments, um, improving the ability of um, the Department of Defense to move technologies out of the laboratory and into the hands of war fighters and soldiers, Marines. Um, and also looking at um, how we hire and recruit people into government service. The only smart people are not the people doing science. And I also learned that n learning, knowing science, knowing the details of the technology is just a tiny percentage of what you need to know to get anything done in Washington. So there are a set of people here in Washington that know how programs are built, how policies are made, how laws are made and how politics work, that scientists and technologists need to, to know, need to learn from before they can really um, successfully advocate for anything. The thing I, I really enjoyed the most and was surprised about a little bit was how on these science issues, um, you very quickly worked with your Republican counterparts. I was working for a Democratic senator at the time. Um, and. Um, you know, the, the, the times when you got to sit down with Republican staffers and you knew your bosses didn't agree on everything, but you were going to work together on this thing, whatever it is you were working on to get something done. Um, I really remember those, uh, those times as well. One thing about the fellowship program uh, when you're working on the Hill is that it provides you with an almost instantaneous network uh, and fantastic Rolodex, both of the current fellows and of um, past fellows. Um, uh, and the fellowship program does a really good job of building that community for you. Uh, I still am in contact over 10 years later with people in my fellowship class and people who were fellows before me. Um, I've worked for former fellows and I've, I've tried to help many, many fellows who came after me figure out what to do 
uh, during their fellowship year and after. So um, the fellowship program supplies you a good set of, of technical people to talk to, but there are also hidden in on Capitol Hill other scientists and engineers who just end up on Capitol Hill that you can work with. Plus, working on the Hill gives you access to almost any expert or source of information that you could desire. Um, at almost any time, you can call up a society or a university or a federal agency and get someone to come in to talk to you about whatever it is you're interested in at the time. AAAS provides an orientation for a week before the fellowship begins, and they, they really do their best to, to let you know that you're going to be moving into a world of policy makers as opposed to a, a lab or a university environment. In the space of a week they do their best to teach you what they can about um, how a bill becomes a law and that sort of thing, but it is nothing like what you experience when you get there. The thing I, that they can't teach well is politics. And so the idea of being in a, um, a campaign and how that affects what your boss is going to do. Um, in my case, the idea of being in a national campaign and what the senator could do during that year, no one could could teach that to me or have give me an article and, and, and show show me you know what it's going to be like. After my fellowship, uh, after the recount, I went to um, actually went back to my home institution, which was a think tank in town, the Institute for Defense Analysis. Um, I liked the Hill so much that I, I went right back to the Hill almost immediately to the House Science Committee. Um, I worked for a very short time, three months at the House Science Committee, um, and since the fellowship most of my time has been at, uh, was at the Senate Armed Services Committee. I worked for Chairman Carl Levin from Michigan, and I was on the Hill for nine years uh, as the lead staffer for science and technology issues for the Armed Services Committee. Now I work at the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, I'm a special assistant for policy initiatives. Um, the director has detailed me over to the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, where I work as the assistant director for defense programs. So I stayed in Washington after my fellowship, but I, uh, I know a lot of fellows who went right back to their university or their business or their big company um, after the program or turn the fellowship into a completely different consulting type job. Um, there's nothing wrong with either route uh, and in fact I think many of the institutions that let people go and take fellowships in Washington see big value to the campus or to the company that someone's coming back with a lot of Washington understanding and experience. I think everyone should look into the fellowship programs regardless if you are, are a po political junkie or not just because it's such an easy opportunity to learn how policymakers, uh, programs, politics uh, are going to affect your career in science. There's al also the main thing that you can actually affect those policies and programs um, and, and politics through your time in, in the fellowship. It's a great opportunity to see how funding agencies uh, fight for their budgets, how they shape their portfolios, um, how legislators and the executive branch makes regulatory policy, um, makes personnel policies, makes export control policies, whatever it is that might affect you as a researcher or as a small businessman. Um, the, the societies and, and uh, other programs have made it much easier than walking around in Washington with a resume. Um, the, the process um, comes along with it a set of people who can guide you through, both through the society um, and through the fellowship program. And AAAS has a, as established a nice orientation program and a sort of support network for you when you do it. So if you're ever thinking about working in Washington, it just doesn't make sense not to look at the fellowship program as, as, as a way to do it.